Hey gamers, you're listening and watching to What You Gaming On, the show where we start every episode with asking you, what are you gaming on? Let us know what you're gaming on, what game you are playing, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. You can let us know what game you're playing in the comments or email me at whatyougamingon at gmail.com and your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode of What You Gaming On. For now, let's talk about a little bit what I've been gaming on and that has been Final Fantasy 15. This game, I think this game caught everyone by surprise. Final Fantasy, Square Enix, Final Fantasy haven't made a strong Final Fantasy title in a good while. I think probably the best one they've made in a while before 15 was 12, but again, I, well, not again, I haven't said it yet, but I haven't played Final Fantasy 12 all the way through. I've only played like the first fourth of the game. So I do want to go back. What I played of it was good, but as far as I can tell, Final Fantasy has not made a good game probably since before even Final Fantasy X because as much as I like Final Fantasy X, it gets a lot of hate. And I can actually understand where that hate is coming from, but still, I like Final Fantasy X. But Final Fantasy XV is the best Final Fantasy game to come from Square Enix in a while, and we were all so surprised by it. Even, like, even just ramping up to the game's launch, we saw trailers and gameplay play of it at E3 and, you know, gearing up to the launch of Final Fantasy 15. We were seeing trailers for it and we're like, this is a weird road trip of a boy band and they're fighting monsters and doing something in their car and it's a weird road trip. And I mean, as much as that's an accurate description of what Final Fantasy 15, it's basically, it's basically a bachelor party road trip gone wrong. That is... If, if you need a description of Final Fantasy 15, that's it. Bachelor Party Road Trip Gone Wrong. And, but when it came out, we, like, we didn't know what to expect. It just, it looked odd. We, we didn't know how to place it. We were like, oh, this is probably going to suck because Square Enix hasn't put out a good Final Fantasy game in a while. And so far, this just looks dumb. And, but then it came out and it was great. It really was a solid game, and I'm going back and I'm replaying it now that they finished putting out the different episode DLCs of the other characters, as well as the Comrades MMO, but just the first time I played it, and even now, it is still a very solid game. My biggest issues with this game, really, I only, I really only have two of them. One of them is the, not the story itself, but how the story is told. Basically, if you want the complete story of Final Fantasy XV, as much of as, as much of a strong story as Final Fantasy XV the game gives you, if you want the complete story and all of the different connections and context of what's going on in this story, you have to go to two or three other different places. You have to go to the Final Fantasy XV game on its own. You then have to watch the and the Final Fantasy XV anime Brotherhood, which kind of tells the backstories of of the four main characters of Noctis, Prompto, Ignis, and Gladio, uh, and how they're and like how they became friends and what their friendships mean to each other. And then you also have to watch the Final Fantasy XV Kingsglaive movie. Is that what it's called? The Kingsglaive? Uh, I think it was King. Yeah, I think it was Kingsglaive, where it, it tells the story of the attack on the Crown City that happens in the very beginning of Final Fantasy XV, which they've actually now added like some some kind of action shots of some of the events that went on in that movie into the game. And then you also have the kind of MMO of Final Fantasy 15 of Comrades, which from, I haven't played it yet. Just like I haven't played the uh, other episode DLCs and getting to it. So maybe a lot of what's explained in those movies are put into the actual like Prompto and Gladio and Ignis episode DLCs as well as Comrades, the MMO, which Comrades is kind of the GTA Online that G that was for GTA 5. It's it's that game, but it's the online MMO version of that game. So it, it's something that I'm will looking to get into, but I'm wondering if maybe they've kind of cleared up a lot of that context that you get from the other TV shows and movie uh, into the actual game, and maybe that'll clear it up. I hope it does, but, uh, we'll see. I, I don't know, but that, that's my biggest problem. That's my biggest problem is that the story is put into various different mediums that you have to seek out to really get a good context of what's going on in this game. My other issue is something that they've so far only done once, 
but they've already announced that they're going to do it again, is that they try to make Final Fantasy XV a game that it's not. What it, like what it needs to be? It needs to be a Final Fantasy game, and as different and evolved as it is from past Final Fantasy games, it is still very much a strong Final Fantasy game. But for whatever reason, because the creators met at a conference and were like, "Hey, we love your games! Oh my God, we love your games too! Let's collaborate on some DLC," they put in an Assassin's Creed DLC into Final Fantasy 15. I don't think I could come up with two more different games between Assassin's Creed and Final Fantasy, but they decided to make it happen, and the Assassin's Creed Festival DLC was, in my opinion, a train wreck. Don't get me wrong, I loved the fanboy, the, the fanboying and fangirling out that the creators of Final Fantasy did for Assassin's Creed. As an Assassin's Creed fan myself, I appreciated the little the little like bits of nod to the Assassin's Creed lore and the different characters of Assassin's Creed at this Assassin's Creed festival. But trying to turn Final Fantasy XV into this parkour stealth assassination game, it did not work. It was a train wreck. I, it, it was like the, the festival, doing the festival took about an hour and it was one of the worst gaming experiences of my life. Probably, it's probably the second worst, second worst gaming experience of my life. It was such a chore that you had to just slaw through and it was just a terrible DLC. I'm sorry, Square Enix. I appreciate what you're trying to do and I appreciate you wanting to fanboy out about Assassin's Creed with the Assassin's Creed Festival, but it was awful. Well, on the other hand, Assassin's Creed did some Final Fantasy stuff with Assassin's Creed Origins, and they added in, like, this little quest where you basically had to solve a riddle, and then you get a really cool, like, cinematic that you get to watch that you could argue is or isn't canon of Final Fantasy XV lore, and then you get a really cool sword and a really cool shield for the rest of the game. So, Assassin's Creed definitely did a better job of inserting some Final Fantasy stuff into the actual game of Assassin's Creed Origins, whereas Final Fantasy XV did not. They, they failed. Boy, did they fail. And now, they're trying to do it again with, they're trying, they're, they've said that they're going to do a similar collaboration with uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which, I mean, that makes a little bit more sense because Shadow of the Tomb Raider is made by a studio, uh, I can't remember the name of the studio, but it's made that by a studio that is basically under the umbrella of Square Enix. So, I mean, that at least makes a little bit more sense is that they're connected by the same company, but again, could not think of more two more different games than Tomb Raider and Final Fantasy, and I don't have high hopes that whatever they collaborate on will be good. Maybe they learn their lesson with the Assassin's Creed Festival, uh, because and it, it'll be good, but I'm, I'm not holding my breath on that. But that, that's my other big problem, is that they try to make Final Fantasy XV a game that it's not. And trying to do that is actually kind of lets us segue into some of just the weird things that Square Enix has done with Final Fantasy. Don't get, like, just before I get into this, I just want to put out there, I am a huge Final Fantasy fan. Uh, I, I'm a huge Square Enix fan. Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts are the two series that I basically got started gaming on. Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VIII was one of the first games that I really, really got into when I was a kid. And then I played seven, and then I played nine, then I played ten, and like those were the games that I just really got into. And I didn't get to play uh, a lot of the ones between ten and the others because they were going to uh, to the like the new systems. Then I just wasn't in a position to get those new systems, so I didn't get to play a lot of the new ones. But I played. I played the hell out of 7 through 10, and I love them. So, And the same thing with Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2, uh, but I'll, I'll talk about Kingdom Hearts later. But we have to admit, as much as I am a fan of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy and Square Enix, they just make some really weird games. Uh, and it, that, that really kind of 
hinges on just the story of some of these games. Like, just talking about Final Fantasy XV, like I said, it's a bachelor party road trip gone wrong. You're Prince Noctis, your your country and, and home city is attacked by this empire, so you have to travel to the different tombs of the past kings to get their power and the blessings of the Titan, but then it just, it gets weird. And Final Fantasy XV actually has that moment where you can literally see the line that is crossed from, like, following the story, following a cohesive story to we're just going to jump shark we're just going to jump shark after shark and then Prompto's not really human and then there's a mortal guy who has a beef with Nakas ancestor and then Nakas has to go into a, a cocoon and it it just gets weird and you know what there's even some stuff in the in the early in the very earliest parts of the game that to me don't make sense and, and I'm talking about Cindy Cindy is the mechanic she's the granddaughter of Sid who there's always a Sid in Final Fantasy she's the granddaughter in Sid and I don't know what her purpose is aside from sexualization. Don't get me wrong. There is a part of me, there's a very specific part of me that appreciates Cindy and absolutely has a gamer crush on Cindy. But you, but call a spade a spade. Her sole purpose is for sexualization. And, I, and it just, it stands out like a sore thumb with Final Fantasy 15 and like it it just it it devolves into a weird game and this isn't the first time that Final Fantasies have done this talking about Final Fantasy 7 through 10 with Final Fantasy 7 you start off you're in a kind of eco warrior slash terrorist cell you're trying to stop Shinra this this evil corporation that's basically using up all the resources of the planet and then you have to stop them and that fight turns into stopping Sephiroth who is the descendant of the the Cetra who were the ancient race of people who the planet was basically taken from so it's basically following the Native American history narrative and like you're like okay I'm following a little bit but then you find out about the subplot where Cloud isn't actually Cloud or he is Cloud but he thinks he has the life of this other character Zack because he has PTSD and has and, and his brain has been has been experimented on with with Mako energy in and, and, and then and then Sephiroth's trying to bring a meter it like it gets weird it gets weird it gets Weird, and even the parts where like Hojo, the mad scientist, is actually Sephiroth's father, and Sephiroth may or may not actually be one of the Cetra, but Aerith, def Aerith definitely is. And then he's trying to have a a talking cat dog, Red Thirteen, try to mate with Aerith, and like it, it it's just weird. And then going on to Final Fantasy VIII, which is one of my personal favorites. Maybe that's just nostalgia, but I liked Final Fantasy VIII. I liked uh, Squall as a character, maybe because. I just, I just, uh, I identified with Squall in a lot of ways, and maybe that says more about me than Squall, but I like the idea of, like, this mercenary school, and then you're trying to stop the evil country of Galbadia that's being run by this evil sorceress, and at the end of Disc 2, the big confrontation between Balam Garden and Galbadia Garden is still one of the best Final Fantasy experiences I've ever seen. It is just so cool and it goes across this huge battle between the two gardens and you know what I'm a sucker I am a sucker for big battle scenes like that so it just really worked for me but then you start to get into the part where their memories are being forgotten because of the magic they're using and all the characters actually grew up in the same orphanage but because they're using magic they forgot about each other but now they're all back together again and they have to stop Ultimisha who is a is a sorceress from the future and the only way to stop her is to fold past present and future into one timeline which th that still doesn't really make a lot of sense to me and ultimately she was just a terrible was just a terrible villain unless you prescribe to the theory that Ultimicia is actually Rhinoa in the future and she became a sorcerer and was trying to change time so that she could save her friends that would make Ultimicia and in my opinion the ending of Final Fantasy 8 a lot better um but again, it just, it got weird. Final Fantasy IX is actually the Final Fantasy, in my opinion, that it, it pretty much held a good, strong, cohesive story all the way until the very end. You were this puckish rogue character of Zidane, and you had to save a princess who was trying to stop her evil mother from using evil magic, who was being manipulated by this other evil dude, Cujo, and you... And you find out about like the ancient people who use these magics, and it's all it's all making sense. And I liked Final Fantasy IX a lot, and it I love the kind of steampunk 
fantasy uh, fantasy setting of this world. And then at the very end, you're like, wow, I'm really following. This is making a lot of sense. And then the aliens come and it stops making sense. There are clones, there are aliens, there are alien clones, and it just, it, it loses me. Just like the other Final Fantasy games, it loses me and I'm not 100% sure what is going on. On. It's as if they were writing out the plot for Final Fantasy IX and they just got stuck and they're like, oh man, what are we going to do now? Here's an idea. Then the aliens come and they just ran with it. And it, again, it didn't make sense and it got weird. And Final Fantasy X, to this day, Final Fantasy X admittedly was actually the first Final Fantasy I ever beat. Uh, because when I was younger, I couldn't beat Final Fantasy 7 through 9. I didn't beat them until the last few years, until within the last few years when I finally went back and beat 7 through 9. But, I, but Final Fantasy 10 is the first Final Fantasy I beat. And to this day, I'm still very confused about the ending. Like, Titus is sent for into the future by magic to fight this to help Yuna a summoner fight this monster that reemerges every uh, every generation then you find out that the monster is actually Titus's father and then Titus isn't actually real uh, it, it, and then they tried to do X2 and I, and I tell you X2 or rather Final Fantasy X2 is where I stopped paying attention to Final Fantasy. That was kind of like the the straw that broke the camel's back or whatever analogy you want to use. That was the moment where I really stopped paying attention to Final Fantasy. It was Final Fantasy 10-2 with Yuna and and Riku and Pain and they're basically this this pop girl band who they changed their outfits and that was their special power is their outfits and then Titus and then like it has multiple endings where Titus where one of the endings is where Titus comes back and he's real and it it, it just didn't make sense it didn't make sense and and don't get me wrong I liked Final Fantasy 10 it gets a lot of bad rap for it for a lot of reasons and I understand those reasons but I I did. I liked Final Fantasy X, but Final Fantasy X-2 is kind of where I stopped really paying attention. I didn't play Final Fantasy XI, which was like their first their first attempt at an MMO. And then Final Fantasy XII, now that they have Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, on the PS4, I do want to go back and really play Final Fantasy XII and give that a really strong shot. Because what I played of it was actually pretty good. But then after Final Fantasy XII, there's Final Fantasy XV, which... Like, I put maybe 30 hours in Final Fantasy 13, and so I don't even think I got past the tutorial. Uh, the, the best description of Final Fantasy 13 that I have heard is that it's like playing a really attractive idiot at chess. It's great to look at. They're great to look at. But there's not much challenge, and but it was, and that's that's an accurate description of Final Fantasy 13, and it just, from what I experienced of the game and what other people have played in the game, I haven't heard a single good thing about it. Final Fantasy 14 was then their MMO, their I guess second try at an MMO, which if I understand it correctly, Final Fantasy 14 actually rewrites. The MMO that was Final Fantasy 11, I think. Is that how it is? I don't know. I didn't pay attention to Final Fantasy 14 a lot. It's not something that I heard a lot about, which can be good or bad. Uh, I played a very small amount of it, and I wasn't really into it. I don't think it really worked as an MMO. And then, of course, there's Final Fantasy 15. Uh, and I got, don't even get me started on the complications and the weirdness of of the Kingdom Hearts series. Again, love playing Kingdom Hearts, played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 to absolute death, but you have to admit that they are just, like, whoever had the idea, like, I can't imagine someone standing in a Square Enix boardroom and being like, hey, I have an idea. Let's combine Final Fantasy with Disney movies. And somehow that worked into Kingdom Hearts. And, like, just, I went back and played it, like, I went back and played it a little bit recently. And I'm sorry, I could not take it seriously of young Haley Joe Osment being Sora and knowing with all my might that Kingdom Hearts is light. And then Mickey's gonna come out and, hey, Sora, we're gonna go save the world in our gummy ship. Like, I'm sorry, it's a ridiculous synopsis. It is absolutely ridiculous. 
but it somehow works. And I understand that this is a kid's game. It really is. But even as a kid's game, like it's, it's, it's so, it's such a complicated story because it started out, you just had the heartless and you had to save the planets, but then they added the nobodies and then they added chain of memories where they had to pick apart Sora's memories and put them back together. And then they have dream drop. Uh, what was a dream drop, dream drop distance. And then you had the nobodies and you had the 360, what, 352 day flash two days something that's a story of Sora's nobody and the clone of Sora's nobody and like it, they they just kept adding these side games that just made the story even more complicated and I'm going back and I'm playing I'm trying to go back and play all these side games to get ready for Kingdom Hearts 3 which I'm still not totally convinced that the game that that game is ever going to come out I'll believe it when I'm sitting down and playing it but I'm trying to go back and play these old games. That's that, that might be uh, some gameplay for another video in the future. Uh, but, like, it's just weird. The conclusion I'm coming to, as much as I am a fan of Square Enix, when I think Square Enix, I think Kingdom Hearts, I think Final Fantasy, as much as I am a fan of both of these series, almost a lifelong fan, I've been playing these games, like, Final, like I said, Final Fantasy VIII was one of the first games that I ever really got into, that I ever really got like obsessed with playing. And I've been playing it as long as I can remember. And the same thing with Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts came out shortly after Final Fantasy X. And I got into this game and I've, I've always liked the games. But just call a spade a spade. Square Enix makes some really weird games. But what do you think? What do you think about these weird games that Square Enix makes and the weird aspects of Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts? And are there any other weird games that you love playing, but you have to admit they're really weird? Let me know in the comments or in an email or on any of these social media on the internet. So uh, let me know. Tell me what game you're playing on and you will be featured. Your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode of What You Gaming On. Uh, so if you want to see past videos or you want to see my written video game reviews, go to www.treyguillotine.com and subscribe to my channel and keep on gaming, gamers.